Alrighty, welcome back to the Technus Corner. I'm your host, Sabluka, and why don't you step right on in. Today, no clickbait like usual, how to install an additional drive in a Windows machine. It's going to be rather easy. It's not a difficult task. If you follow my instructions, I'll get you to the first sector, which is how to install the drive, and then how to activate the drive. And then from then on in, it's dependent on what you decide to do in relation to whether you just want a simple activation of the drive, or maybe you've got two drives of a similar nature, where it be just spindle HDD, so hard drives, standard old mechanical hard drives, we call them spindle drives as well, or SSDs, okay, or maybe even you're lucky enough, two NVMEs of the same type. And if you've got the same type, then we're also going to show you how to stripe the two drives together, or otherwise known as RAID 0, and understand if one of them fail, then they both fail and you lose everything on both drives. But that should hopefully give us a little bit of a speed boost. And this way of applying these drives in Windows, if there are additional drives to your operating system drive, applies to all these types of drives, regardless of what they are, as long as they're the one and the same. And for activation purposes, it doesn't matter. This method applies for all these drives, HDDs, SSDs, NVMe SSDs. Yeah, so let's get into what we're doing today at the Technus Corner exactly in relation to the PC over there. Just to add a bit more oomph in relation to its storage capacity. So yeah, my name's Sabluka again. Thanks for joining us at the Technus Corner. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It's a free way to show your support. So let's get stuck right on in. So what we got happening here regarding this PC over there, it's got a, I believe a 500 gigabyte SSD running Windows 10 Professional. And we're going to add a couple of, uh, so I've got like a two terabyte drive. I've got a three terabyte drive and I've got two single one terabyte drives because this is a perfect opportunity to use these two single one terabyte drives. I'm going to combine them into a two terabyte drive and the read capacity in the right of one of these drives by combining them in RAID 0 in a Stripe fashion in Windows, I should be able to get double the speed of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install both these drives separately, show you the speeds of both these drives separately, how they operate. And then after combining them, show you the speeds using this application, this program called Crystal Disk Mark, that'll show you the sequential read and writes. They're just sequential, but they give you an indication of the fact that these drives may be boosted in performance by combining them as well so that they can play off each other. So essentially information goes to one and the other at twice the speed because it's being split into both drives, get me? So in theory, we should get twice the speed of one of these drives essentially, but we'll test these and we'll show you guys that. But before we do that, okay, before we do that, we'll show you how to just basically install these into the computer and activate them in Windows regardless if you're planning to go one step further and do the RAID 0 stripe RAID array with the two drives if you're lucky enough to have two of the same type. So let's go people. So I'll get this computer ready and yeah. So first things first, we get into the back of your case. And as you see here, you're going to need a space where you can put and mount your, your hard drive. In this case, we've got two hard drives, but we've got some caddies over here that we can mount these into. So go ahead and mount your drives essentially into, your, into the back of the case. Then you're going to need a SATA connection and a SATA connection, which is either or which is which. That's another story. As you can see over here, we've got ourselves some SATA cables. And depending on the speed, you probably want ones which are rated for six gigabits a second. Otherwise, three gigabits a second means they're only half as strong and can transfer only half the data 
and older motherboards are running still at 3 gigabits a second or SATA 2 or SATA 3 runs off 6 gigabits a second and you want to make sure that your SATA cables are verified of that capacity so that you get the quickest and most data transfer available especially when it comes to SSDs not a hard drive as much but SSDs so we'll get one of these ready or we'll get two of them ready so right angle will go towards the back side here and these straight ones will go into the motherboard itself and then what you also need but imagine these being connected to your power supply these are your SATA connections and they will power the hard drive so they'll get plugged in like so okay and this SATA connection goes to the motherboard itself so that gets plugged in like so and then one is connected to your power supply the other one goes to the corresponding spot on the motherboard okay and with that being said i'm going to do that with both of these drives and we're going to fast forward to the point that we are booting and going into the bios in the bios all we have to do is make sure that these are activated that the sata ports are activated and then windows will do the rest once we get through into windows as long as your operating system drive stays the same and doesn't get messed with in regards to its location and whatnot. I'll further explain more as we get through it. SATA or SATA cables depending on what part of the world you're in. Spot two or three. If you know the spots in the motherboard, they correspond with numbers. And if you can get those numbers and jot them down, it makes life a lot easier because you know what has to be activated if you need to activate any or enable any of the SATA ports so that these drives can run. They should be by automatic and default enabled and your operating system should overpower any of these drives so you with these connected you should be able to boot straight into windows and just activate them from windows all righty i'll put them into sata or sata port two and three i still got to connect the front io to the which is the front usb ports and audio ports and whatnot to the computer but we won't do it just yet um, i'll show you guys how to do these drives first so with that being said since these are all connected just double check after playing on the opposite side that the other side hasn't been pulled subsequently i don't believe it has and then what you do is you well i put the lid back on these sides where the cables need still doing and whatnot uh, so that when i'm maneuvering it about i don't have a catch on anything I and mean, then I come back later on and I, do, I finalize the job by doing proper cable management. Always, it's set up in a way where I can just zip tie everything now. Once I'm done, you always have to think. So I've got channels there and I was just zip tied down here, down here and across here. And it'll just pull tight. With that being said, we've got everything in now in relation to the two drives being connected to the power. Then connected to the motherboard as well. Now it's just a matter of plugging the computer back in how it was and first things first you can you can probably go straight into the windows operating system and i'll show you guys what you should be greeted with if not you have to just enable the sata ports uh in this case it's ports th uh, two and three in the bios 
and then you should be able to do what we're about to do by default they should be enabled so unless you've got a real dodgy technician or something doing something iffy or you're doing iffy on the work pcs when you shouldn't be then it should be a simple process as i'm going to document right now Oh, I turned the monitor off. God damn it. All right, hopefully we get through into Windows. Okay. So if you were to get into the BIOS, because for some reason you didn't have to, what you want to do is you want to go to something like, and you want to go into your boot options, hard drive, BSB, properties, and whatnot. So the first drive boot option is the Samsung that we got. Boot option two will be the Western Digital just here. And boot option three will be the terabyte drive that we got just here. Seagate, storage configuration, and you enable like RAID mode or ARCI mode. We're in IDE mode and we're going to leave it in IDE mode because that's how it is in relation to how we set up this system. Pretend that we started the computer up for the first time. So we should boot into the OS as we are doing now, getting into Windows and whatnot. Welcome player one okay and then from there what you want to do is you want to right click on the microsoft button on the start button okay or i'll show you guys first if you open up your folders if you open up your folders and you go to this pc you can see that we've got two drives activated because they've been activated before unfortunately so we're going to have to erase these drives but essentially what you do if you haven't had an activated drive before in windows is you go into disk management, you right click on the start icon, and then you can come in here and you've got disk one and disk two. And luckily there aren't any further partitions or anything which I have to worry about. Otherwise I'd have to format it extensively. Because of this, we're just going to format each one of these drives under its default. And we'll call it extra storage. And then I'll format the other drive as well, extra storage so now we've got drives d and e and they should be also activated if they're not activated what you want to do is you want to activate the partition per se um, so then if we go back over here you can see that we've got extra storage d and extra storage e now what i'll do is i'll fast forward while i load up a application that we'll use to test both these drive speeds and then i'll show you what happens when we combine them and we'll test the speeds after that Alrighty, so Christmas Mark, on the other hand, if you're ever interested and want to start a program out, make sure you get it from the right location, a Crystal Jew, Jewy World. You essentially you just have to execute the file, uh, so that's why you want to trust it. I'll put it into Program C, go to Shortcut, and Install. Otherwise, you may have a zipped or a portable version of it. Launch Crystal Jew Mark. And when you launch it for the first time, this is how it looks by default. All right, and this is how it always looks. Now, the test that it's set on is the default test that I always run all tests on because I always forget otherwise. And, yes, yeah, so what we do is we're going to run a test on drive D and then on drive E, okay? And we're going to see what the speeds are, and then we're going to combine both those drives into one two-terabyte drive or just under, and we'll see if we can increase the speed of that two-terabyte drive rather than these two drives separately by themselves. D drive, we're gonna run the test, and then you just press all, and you just let it do its magic. So what, don't mind me as we fast forward through all of this. done and this is what we've got 192 179 183.80 and very close sequential reading writes random 4k and random 4k are very very low okay we're going to see if we can improve those lows 
and these slice here. But before we do that, we have to run E and do the same test. So we'll see how, how this drive is performing in a second's time. So if we're getting 180-ish on one drive and 150 on the other, we won't get essentially, we won't get 360, but we will get 100, 280, 360. We may get close to 300 on the reads sequentially because that will be the slowest double that. So both these drives, I believe, are 7,200 RPM as well. And we'll just fast forward through the rest of these tests. At the same time, you can get Crystal Disk Mark Info, and that can check the health of these hard drives as well, if, if inclined. It's something that can get done as well. Probably more beneficial on drives of this nature, just to see what's going on and if any defragging is necessary or anything like that. All right, so that's finished with, and as you can see, the scores there, about 30 or 20 clicks lower sequentially read and writes. Uh, there's two, two top ones. So now what we're going to do, is we'll close this program. These two drives here, just for visuals, I am going to essentially disengage and re-engage together. So you have to go into the start area, right click on it, disk management, make sure you don't touch the operating system drive whatsoever. And what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm going to delete the volume and unallocate it, delete the volume and unallocate it. And then what you need to do is we want to span the volumes, but we want to stripe them instead. So we're going to go striped on one of them. You've got disk one, here you've got disk two, so we're going to add it. Okay. Then you're going to hit next. Assign the drive letter D to it because it's the next one up. Makes life easier. And then Allocation unit size, we were used to default volume label, we'll call extra storage raid, call it extra storage raid, form a quick format, and hit next, finish that, yes, the operation just sick, yes, but this has just done, and it's just opened up the extra storage raid that we've just created, you can see both here, disk one and disk two, extra storage raid, D, uh, drive D and drive C is our operating system drive. So we close this now and we go have a look at in this PC here. You've got C drive and you've got D drive. Extra storage RAID 0 and it's just under 2 terabytes. This folder is empty. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run the test on this and hopefully sequentially the speeds are at least higher than what they were before regardless of if they're not double or not exactly. But I, I hope there's a significant increase in it. So let's do sequentially, we'll just run it for these two top numbers and we'll see what we get. But the bottom numbers, if they increase, it's a massive bonus for us. And as you can see, it's closer to 300 rather than the 360 mark at the beginning, or close to about 310 or so-ish which is definitely an improvement, you'd have to agree. Hopefully the 4K numbers, which are the bottom ones here, are a little bit higher as well, but sequentially speaking, uh, we'll definitely get some interesting figures which are beneficial to us by rating them rather than having them separate, uh, sequentially speaking, of course. We'll fast forward through this as well, and we'll see what we get at the end, see what comes out at the end, y'all.
you, you, you're limited to what you got. And sequentially speaking, it's not always, it's, it's sometimes the numbers are for show, but in this case, it'll help with buy transfers and accessing assets a lot quicker, reading and writing out of them. So games wise, the drives will be a lot zippier if you're, and all loading times, if you are booting up off the spindle drives, which are now almost as fast as sequentially speaking as a crappy old SSD from yesteryear. So that being said, uh, this part here will stabilize a little bit higher still. That's good. 2.43, 3.37, where we had ones before, but the 297, 297, and the 3010, and 308, and 308, I beg your pardon, is pretty much double our lowest, like I specified would be the case. So that's really healthy, and that's a healthy improvement. So if we now go, guys, essentially, you can have a look in here. Not only have we got our extra storage drive activated, but we've got a RAID 0 also activated, or a Stripe Fashion Drive RAID Array activated on this extra storage here that we can put whatever we like in there. And yeah, including games and whatnot. A little tip as well, uh, make sure your SSDs and all your storage drives are only ever 80% full, so there's a little bit of maneuverability in them. You want about 20% free so that they don't completely tank. All right? And with that being said, you all, uh, hope you guys got a basic understanding or an understanding of how to install some additional drives. One, two, three, four, five. Rating is a different story, but single-handedly just separate drives without the RAID array, very easily done. And yeah, my name's Sabluka. Thanks for joining us at the Technos Corner. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It's a free way to show your support. And for that, I'm so grateful. So yeah, my name's Sabluka. Thanks for joining us again at the Technus Corner and peace out, y'all. Bye.